Hello. My name is Damian Beauchamp, and when I was 18 and in my first week of undergrad at Kent State University, I lost my best friend, Matt Heaver, to a tragic accident. And I dedica I'm dedicating today's talk to him. That event had a profound effect on my life, as I'm sure you can tell. And it was then that I decided I would do everything I could to try to improve the human narrative. While an undergrad at Kent State, I found my passion for both chemistry and the energy industry. And it was through these two th areas that I chose to try to contribute to the world. Now, energy is tightly intertwined with all our narratives, so much so that energy is 10% of the global GDP. So I was shocked when I found out that what is effectively the world's largest supply chain has no inventory. Rather, the electricity that's powering the lights in this room was generated just moments ago. What this means is that electrical supply needs to be in constant balance with electrical demand. And this balancing act is costing our economy upwards of $390 billion annually due to waste, outages, ecology, and fresh water withdrawal. Now, in order to maintain this large of a balancing act, rich, large countries like ours build large centralized power plants and complex distribution networks. This is extremely inefficient and very costly. So costly that underdeveloped countries can't possibly pony up the cash to implement this kind of infrastructure. Therefore, they go without electricity for basic things like healthcare and education. Now, I'm sure we can all imagine a time when we were in a classroom and that classroom was very hot. So hot, in fact, that we couldn't even focus on the lesson at hand. All we could think about was the sweat pouring down our back. And the unfortunate thing is that this is the reality for a portion of the world. Now, the good news is that we have things like renewable energy, such as solar and wind, which provide decentralized, lower cost access to electricity. But if the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing, no electricity can be obtained from these sources. So I'm sure that you have arrived by now at the same solution that I did a time ago, and that is that we need an electrical inventory. We need a method for storing this electricity. And this isn't a new concept. In fact, 4% of all electricity that's produced today is stored, but 99% of it is done so via pumped hydro. This is a method whereby when there's excess electricity in the grid, it's used to power a pump to pump water up a hill into a reservoir above a dam. Then later, when electrical demand increases, you can flow that water over that dam through the generators and produce electricity. But this method of energy storage is only 70% energy efficient. It's extremely costly to implement, and it's limited geographically. Therefore, the DOE has identified large stationary batteries to do this energy storage job. But the battery industry hasn't seen a revolution in over a decade. And what we have are things like lead acid, which are fairly cost effective, but their energy efficiency is the same as pumped hydro, 70%. Alternatively, we have things like lithium ion batteries, which are more energy efficient, but whose cost is too great to be implemented through all the applications that society is demanding. Therefore, we need an energy efficient and cost effective solution to store energy. And that's why I co-founded CARE with John Baer, Yi Ying Wu, Xiaodi Ren, and Kate Fisher in order to commercialize the potassium air battery that was invented here at Ohio State by Yi Ying Wu and Xiaodi Ren. Now this battery uses porous carbon and air as the cathode material, and it uses potassium as the anode, which is the seventh most abundant element on Earth. So let me take you through how the battery works. Oxygen flows in through the porous carbon cathode, and potassium floats across the electrolyte, meeting that oxygen, forming potassium superoxide on the porous carbon substrate. All right? Once that porous carbon substrate is completely coated in potassium superoxide, it's time to recharge the battery. Electricity is supplied from an external source to decompose the potassium superoxide back into potassium, and oxygen leaves the battery. So has everybody got that? Ready to build batteries? All right. So because of half of the battery is effectively porous carbon and air, we have an energy density that's three times greater than the industry's best lithium ion. What this means is that you need less batteries to store an equivalent amount of electricity. Because potassium superoxide is electrically conductive and is formed and decomposed via a one electron process, our energy efficiency is 
without the use of any catalysts. This means that you can get back almost all the energy you use to charge the battery. But the real advantage here is that we can provide this level of performance at a production cost of just $90 per one kilowatt hour battery. So let me put that in perspective. The same lithium ion battery would cost $550 to produce. Furthermore, the DOE has identified that in order for stationary storage via batteries to become widely implemented, the cost per battery must fall below $150 per one kilowatt hour battery. And they set that price point for 2020. But Ohio State has beat that price point by $60 and done so five years early. So what we're talking about So this fundamentally changes the way the world needs to generate, distribute, and consume electricity. In addition, we now have a low-cost storage option to pair with renewables for third world countries. Now, Henry Kissinger once said that he who controls energy can control entire continents. That statement really hit me in the face. That's a bold statement. And today, large corporations control energy. They control its generation. They control its distribution. They control its price. They control the cost to implement total solutions preventing third world countries' access to electricity. But the good news is, with CARES Energy Solution, we remove corporate control and empower you. By putting you in control of your energy, you have more control over your life, effectively more freedom. I want you to imagine your home generating, storing, and distributing its own electricity. Imagine never having to go to the gas station again and being a victim of corporate and bureaucratic erratic price fluctuations. That was a mouthful. Um, <laughs> now, our nation often talks about national energy independence. But what I want you to envision is individualized energy independence. Now, I understand what I'm talking about may seem too good to be true. So let me try to help you put it in perspective. Decades ago, we needed a computer the size of an entire room to perform simple computation. Today, we've arrived at the iPhone, which can run multiple complex applications in parallel and do so in the palm of your hand. And surely, if we would have told the gentleman in this photo that this was going to be possible today, he probably would have thought that was too good to be true. So when we look at our current form of energy storage, it seems a bit archaic. We throw a huge cement slab in the middle of a river to dam up some water. I mean, a beaver can build a dam. <laughs> and, yeah. and so the question I have for you is, aren't we smarter than this? As a society, aren't we better than this? And with Care Battery, we are. What we're talking about is a game-changing technology that will revolutionize our human narrative. The future of energy is here. The only question is, do you care? Thank you.